and welcome to this edition of Water Drops. Today we're going to be talking about adding overland flooding to your drainage design schemes with 1D and 2D analyses. This workflow is for stormwater modelers who are working on drainage design projects. It's for design engineers who need to demonstrate exceedance flow paths, model climate change events or worst case scenarios and map that overland flooding in the drainage design scheme that they are working on. And really it's also for anybody else looking to increase confidence in the overall performance of their drainage design. Note that I haven't said specifically that this is for advanced modelers or more experienced modelers because info drainage really makes creating a coupled 1D, 2D analysis very simple so that you can map overland flooding if your 1D system does experience any exceedance issues. The workflow that we're going to be following, first we're just going to run a basic 1D analysis and manually look at the flood risk there. We're going to set some basic uh, 1D, 2D analysis criteria. We're then going to run that 1D, 2D analysis, review those results, and show some of the different ways that we can export those results. So first thing we're going to do is just run this 1D analysis. And so what I mean by one dimensional here, basically that's just our pipe flow. So the program's going to apply the rainfall data we have loaded into the catchment areas, route that flow into our one dimensional system. So our ponds, our nodes, our uh, channels, all that sort of stuff. So right now this catchment area is linked up to this rain garden. It's gonna apply those flows into the rain garden. We have a outlet pipe here set up as our under drain. We have a uh, trapezoidal weir kind of acting as our high flow outlet. And then this routes down to a dry pond. So we have another stormwater control structure here at the downstream end. So running that analysis, uh, we automatically get the stormwater control summary pop up. Uh, we can see quickly the status of those different stormwater elements. If I click on critical storm, that will take us to the, the critical storm. Uh, so you can see the event switched from the one year to the 100 year event. We can see that our uh, rain garden is experiencing some flood risk. So basically flood risk means it's kind of getting into that freeboard, uh, but it's not quite overtopping. Uh, but what if we were to increase this rainfall uh, just to model somewhat of a worst case scenario or again, uh, just to model something, try to try to break this, try to see what happens when our flows uh, do exceed the capacity of our one dimensional system. So I'm just going to increase this by 5% here in my rainfall manager. This is a quick and easy way, again, to just kind of model these different, um, different worst case scenarios. And then we'll run that again. And so once that analysis is finished, we can again sort by critical storm and see quickly that our rain garden is flooding and our dry pond here is experiencing a flood risk. Uh, so if we look at that in a more visual view in these profile views, if I just pull this open, it's opening on my other screen. And we play through the simulation, we can start to see that water surface elevation change. I'm gonna to toggle to that 100 year event here. And if I just play through here, we can see uh, that water surface elevation changing looks like around this point is when it starts to flood um, so we can see that this is getting overtopped uh, this manhole is also flooding so let's say that we're a reviewer reviewing agency or the jurisdiction that we're working in now wants to see all right so this is going to be overtopped during this type of event now where is that flow going to go um, is it going to go straight into our condominiums that we have over here? Is it going to go into these condominiums over here? Um, and of course, this type of analysis can be done using, uh, you know, a visual inspection, kind of a manual inspection, um, or we can run a 1D, 2D analysis. So basically what the 1D, 2D analysis is going to do, it's going to first run that 1D analysis. So it's going to apply the rainfall to our catchment areas, same thing route those into our ponds. But if anything in our 1D system does flood, the engine will then take that flooded volume, the time at which it's flooding, for how long it's flooding, and then apply that 
to our surface conditions. It's going to generate a mesh for that surface and then perform the calculations to see uh, where exactly that overland flow is going to go and how that's going to behave. So in order to run a 1D, 2D analysis, we'll select this button from the analysis ribbon and then you'll be prompted for some analysis criteria. So first thing you'll want to do is specify a minimum element area and so this is for the mesh that gets created based on your surface data. Uh, for this example, we're going to do a 50 foot mesh. Um, this increased rainfall percentage, I did switch it from five to eight just to kind of make the uh, flooding a little more interesting here. Uh, but you'll select your rainfall criteria and then you'll select which recurrence interval you'll want to run this on. So. Uh, unlike the just 1D analyses that InfoDrainage can run, where it runs multiple events at a certain time, for this coupled 1D, 2D analysis, you do just have to select one storm. So we're going to uh, select the most uh, intense storm here, again, just so we can actually look at what that does if it does flood. And then we will press OK. Uh, the program says it's going to be building that mesh, and then we get a progress bar and then we can review those flooding results. So once that analysis is completed, we can see those 2D results applied on our plan view. So what we're looking at here, this bluish area, that's where there's actually flooding. These arrows are representing our flood directions. And so over here on the left-hand side, we can see the different aspects of the 2D results that we can turn on and turn off. So for example, we can turn off those uh, velocity, depth times velocity arrows. Uh, we can turn off the depth if we wanted. Um, and we can also take a look at those flooding results kind of as they start to happen. So as we play through the simulation on the plan view here, um, going to zero kind of creates, shows the maximum flood values. But if we press play through the simulation, uh, we could see as this is starting off, as those rainfall hydrographs are ramping up and this rain garden's filling up, uh, we don't have any flooding. But if we fast forward to, I think it was around a minute 400 or so, uh, we can actually see when those, when that, uh, right when that rain garden starts to flood, we can see the results. So let's try to time that a little bit better here. Uh, I can fast forward a little bit, kind of speed up that simulation. And so we can see that start to flood. We can see those steps start to change, uh, get intense for a second there, but then uh, kind of as the simulation peters off, it starts to stabilize. It's just kind of slower, shallow flow. Another way to view this 3D data or to view these results is in a three-dimensional view, which can make a pretty compelling visual aid. So uh, this 3D view in InfoDrainage allows you to see all of your drainage elements, of course, in that 3D representation. So if I uh, pan back through the simulation here, kind of go back to about where it's starting at around 400 minutes and press play, we can also see the flooding start to happen in 3D. Now that we have those results in there, if we go to the export tab, anytime we export just this phase or the entire plan view to a CAD or image file, those uh, the 2D results information will be sent with it. So we have, um, for example, if I've exported this to CAD here, uh, we get those results. Obviously gonna take a little bit of formatting and clean up to get it to uh, something that kind of makes sense. But what's nice about getting into that CAD format or exporting it to a GIS uh, type of format here is you can see the different mesh, uh, flooded mesh elements uh, and get those velocity arrows in there as well. And so that concludes this edition of Water Talks. We've talked about uh, the 1D, 2D analysis capabilities of info drainage. Uh, we've demonstrated how this type of analysis can take some of that guesswork 
and any sort of manual surface evaluation out of overland flood routing. The results of this analysis can be exported easily so that you can stay in compliance with local standards if it is a requirement for you to demonstrate those overland flood routes. Additionally, this type of analysis can increase stakeholder buy-in because of the compelling and, of course, accurate visual results. And it can help you increase your confidence in just the overall performance of your drainage design and your final site grading. Thanks so much for attending and we'll see you next time.